Music mogul and rapper Sean Diddy Combs has faced four different lawsuits in recent weeks alleging sexual assault and abuse, all of which he has denied. The first of those came from singer Cassie Ventura, known as Cassie, who accused Combs of sexual abuse and sex trafficking during the decade they were together. NBC's entertainment correspondent Chloe Malas spoke exclusively to a longtime friend of Cassie's who said she witnessed some troubling incidents. Chloe? Good evening, Ellison. Singer-songwriter, activist Tiffany Red had been working with Cassie on an album when she first met Diddy and says that she witnessed him verbally abusing her friend. Following Cassie's settlement with Diddy, Red penned an open letter in Rolling Stone about her experience. She spoke to me about the events that she says traumatized her. I don't think people understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody famous and rich because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo, and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness verbal abuse on more than one occasion. One of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke where Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. So he had her back into the corner and he was like cussing her out with his hand in, his fit in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the like living room area and she's there and he was like emotional singing. Bitch. There you are. And I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his, his what his voice sounds like, but, like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember, like, looking in his eyes, and I said to him, what did y'all do? Because I could see that she was, like, really sedated. That was the first time I'd ever seen her, like, high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday <laughs> And we were like, well, I mean, he's saying this to me, and I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset, like, you know, I guess sh that she didn't want to do with him whatever she, whatever he wanted, I don't know. I don't feel like I could advocate for myself in that moment. Like, I realized, like, oh, this guy is dangerous. Red says it was only a few months ago that Cassie told her what was really going on that night in 2015, that it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak-off against her will. What did Cassie tell you about these freak offs? You know, that he would hire these like sex workers and like they would have, you know, sex with her or whatever. And he would watch and tell them what to do. In her lawsuit, Cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak offs throughout her relationship with Diddy. Red learning recently one horrific detail from Cassie. She told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music, go through any um, plans, any of that was when she had a freak off. So all of our music, all my work, to find out that like I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to rape my friend to, like is just disgusting. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. I remember one time her telling me that I think it might have been The Perfect Match, that, that movie that she was in, and she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes. I do. Why? I mean, look at his rap sheet. An attorney for Cassie declined to comment. Diddy's attorney did not respond. In 2015, Diddy was arrested on three counts of assault with a deadly weapon and other charges for allegedly beating up his son's football coach. Prosecutors declined to file felony charges related to that arrest. 24 hours after Cassie filed her lawsuit, she and Diddy announced that they had reached an undisclosed settlement. Combs released a statement saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. His lawyer adding that the settlement was, quote, in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I mean, I just felt like it's PR. <laughs> he settled because he doesn't want to go to court.
Diddy's music career spans three decades, including three Grammy Awards and the creation of Bad Boy Records, representing artists from Mary J. Blige to the late notorious B.I.G. In September, he was awarded MTV's Global Icon Award. But since the allegations surfaced, Hulu scrapped a reality series about his family, and the Recording Academy said they are considering to rescind his invite to this year's Grammys. You know, I think a lot of people, especially in, my, in, in the black community, are, you know, I've seen the narrative of, like, you know, they just trying to take a black man down. And it's just like, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. This is about accountability and and um, a reckoning. Like, that's just the bottom line. As for what justice looks like? I think justice looks like Diddy being behind bars. And I also think that justice looks like everybody getting retribution for all of the things. The amount of therapy, like I just said, all of my, all of the moments, the time, like these are our careers. And Chloe is back with us now. You hear her saying justice looks like Diddy behind bars. Is there a possibility that could still happen? Where does the criminal case stand? So Cassie filed her federal civil suit here in New York. And the NYPD has come out and said that there is no investigation into Diddy right now. Now, that doesn't mean that the district attorney of Manhattan isn't looking into something or perhaps investigations going on behind the scenes. But publicly, on the record, no such investigation investigation has been confirmed. And also, there have been other lawsuits of some women coming forward with other similar accusations and allegations. And who knows if others might come forward as well. Remember, the Adult Survivors Act is set to expire at the end of this month in the state of California. And we know that Diddy, that is where he has primarily, primarily resided. So you never know if others might come forward between now and the new year. And you spent so much time talking with Tiffany. And you can tell, even watching that back, not being in the room with her, that she has been so deeply impacted by what she says she witnessed. She has been able to sort of take this and turn it in a way, right? Can you explain that? So she calls herself an activist, right? She's not just a singer, songwriter, um, who's worked with so many stars, like I mentioned, Zendaya, Jason Derulo, Cassie. You know, she is somebody that has started an organization called the 100 Percenters. And that's, she says, comes from the fact that she always gives 100%. And this is about advocating for for equal pay and fair rights for those who are both artists and writers and music producers and helping also get them out of archaic music contracts. So she has turned her tragedy and her trauma into something positive, but she said that speaking out to NBC News, speaking out to us, has helped her heal. And she also wants to stand up for her friend Cassie and validate what's in that lawsuit. Amazing reporting. Chloe Malas, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.